the tropical city of Cayenne looks very familiar. Gendarmerie, boulangerie, prices in euros. This is French Guyana in South America, administratively part of France, even though it is 4,000 miles away from the boulevards of Paris. It is said you can tell the colonial legacy of a place by the breakfast they serve. Here it's the croissant. And in the morning papers, the story is all about the gold rush on the Brazilian border. Gold is big news here. More than four tons of it is exported every year, much of it illegally mined. To find out more, I took a ride to the French-Brazilian border and then set off up the Oyapok River that acts as the frontier between Brazil on the one side and Europe on the other. The problem is that almost all the clandestine miners are poor Brazilians. The other passengers were just some of the thousands who have flocked to this river to cross over a mine in what is part of the EU, and so creating Europe's hidden environmental tragedy. There are up to 15,000 Brazilian miners in these jungles. After a precarious journey, we finally reach a settlement which isn't on any map. We've just arrived here, it's been about six hours in the boat at the place they call the Ilia, the island, which is the kind of base camp for all the Garimperos to go into France. A ramshackle support town for the miners, it is home to a floating population of about a thousand people, with boats coming and going constantly. With no police, running water, infrastructure, it's every man for himself. But what's most striking is that the currency here is gold. Pode mostrar tudo isso, o que que é? Os pesos, yeah. Yes, pesos. So this is one gram, um gram aqui. Um gram, daqui um gram. That's one gram. Um gram That's one gram. A maioria das pessoas aqui vem e compra em ouro ou compra em reais? Mas é nem ouro. É igual por no dois, nem ouro nem reais. Is most people come here and buy things in gold, but if you want to, you can use Brazilian currency as well. Ilha is also a major depot for petrol. Men called petroleros carry a constant supply through the jungle on crude backpacks like these to feed the motors that excavate the gold. This is full of oil, 50 kilos of oil, um, which they take into the jungle to, for the machines to work. Okay. <laughs> right. This is incredibly heavy. They walk for one and a half hours through the jungle at night with this on. My God, this is heavy. So they're gonna be walking through the jungle with this. They get three grams of gold per trip, which works out as about 30 quid, which is actually quite well paid. And they say they can do three trips a day, but this really is gonna kill you in the heat. <laughs> It'll kill me anyway. Where miners go, prostitutes follow. There are 10 brothels with dozens of sex workers here in Ilia. The cost is three grams a trip. So this is the rooms where they live. They live here for free. And also they take the guys back. There's a Bible for here. Yes. And she's got a Bible on the bed. How many programs do you have to do for the night? I think so. Five Depends. She says she can go six or seven times, with six or seven different guys a night. For all the lure of riches, Elia is a place that lives on its nerves, with constant patrols by French police and the Foreign Legion. After some persuading, the Garin Perez only agreed to take us to a mine if we promised not to reveal its location. We're almost here, on the side of the river, where a few hundred meters in, supposedly, is a gold mine. Even though I knew what to expect, the devastation of the mine was shocking. First, the rainforest is burnt down to clear space for the dig. Then the earth is hosed down, opening a giant crater, and the muddy gold ore pumped up to a makeshift sluice. It's a lot of destruction, but not much gold. This site only produces about 15 grams a day, worth just under 200 pounds. Even so, it's still worth it for these men 
for whom this is their best chance of a wage. When you buy gold in the high streets of London or Paris, it could have come from a place like this. But these men get very little from this. They share just a third of what is found after the rest is given to the motor's owner. But their impact on the environment is huge. The ecosystem here is being steadily wrecked. While the miners themselves live with a daily threat of malaria, violence, and for them, worse still, French raids where all their equipment is destroyed. But this does not put them off. They will never be able to stop it because the jungle is so big and we are so tenacious. Further up the Oyapok is Camopi, an Indian settlement with a French post office and three gendarmes. The bulk of their work is protecting 14,000 square kilometers of jungle from the Brazilian miners. It's an uphill struggle. One worry, sadly, is that the forest is immense and so after our raids we don't have any way to take the miners out, like on a road or anything that could take a bus. So the workers who are found on site, they just have to be left there. We headed back downriver to the Brazilian town of Oyapok, where the illegally mined gold from the region ends up. There are over a dozen gold shops, all doing a brisk trade. This raw gold arrived from Ilha this morning. Here they melt it down, turn it into bars and weigh it. This piece is worth about a thousand pounds. I've asked him where he thinks most of the gold that comes from this region ends up. He says, mais para fora, most of it abroad. And so, the gold leaves the heart of the Amazon and enters the global supply chain. London's Hatton Garden sees more than a few nuggets of the 2,000 or so tons of gold produced globally every year. But as expert Tim Green says, it's impossible to say whether this gold has come from a legal source or not. Gold is something, you get a bar of gold, it's melted down, it's mixed in with other pieces of scrap that have come in, maybe some gold from a new mine, it's all mixed in together, and that's what you get in your pot of gold. And this is the crux of the problem. How can you regulate an industry if you cannot prove the origin of the gold you buy here? With the price of gold at a 28-year high, and with many more tons left in the ground of French Guyana, the destruction in Europe's piece of the Amazon rainforest is set to continue for some time to come. Alex Berlos, Morphor News, Hatton Garden.